What's happening guys, Sam Adams here, and today we're talking about what you see here above my head, the Xbox and Bethesda merger, or if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty of it, this is Microsoft paying $7.5 billion to acquire ZeniMax Media. What did that buy them to start things off? For $7.5 billion, Microsoft now has an additional 2,300 employees that worked and continue to work at Bethesda Softworks, Bethesda Game Studios, id Software, Zenimax Online Studios, Arcane, Machine Games, Tango Gameworks, AlphaDog, and Roundhouse Studios. So, what did those people make? Games like The Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Doom, Quake, Wolfenstein, Dishonored, and many others. This is a pretty massive deal. Uh, now, I talked about this extensively on a couple of episodes of the podcast last week, if you do want to go back and check that out, but I thought that I would talk about it here in this video, and this is mainly, quite honestly, uh, an action of therapy for me than it really is a piece of entertainment or information for you, but I figured you guys would probably enjoy it, uh, because this is still something that a lot of people are talking about. Uh, on most gaming podcasts, this was the biggest story of the week. You see it on the Kind of Funny X cast in the world of Xbox. You see it on Gamertag Radio, also in the world of Xbox. Uh, but you see it outside of that in so many other little areas. And then you see a lot of drama happening on Twitter. Of course, uh, Vicious696 Paris, who is a host of Gamertag Radio alongside Danny Pena, uh, got into a bit of a tiff with the gaming industry talking about his perspective. Uh, and so I wanted to throw my two cents in to share what I think Microsoft is going to do. Because it's an interesting move to spend $7.5 billion and not have Xbox exclusives that are only able to be played in the PC space or on Xbox hardware. But it's also completely averse to the persona that Microsoft is putting off in 2020. So let's talk about the options here. So first and foremost, you have the Xbox lockdown, as I like to call it. Imagine Fallout 5. Imagine The Elder Scrolls 6, Starfield, the next Doom, the next Wolfenstein, the next Dishonored. All of these games are locked down on Xbox in the world of consoles. Now you can still get them through Project X Cloud or Xbox Game Streaming or whatever name they want to call it on your mobile device, or even in the future, a laptop or a PC. You can also play directly on PC through Game Pass or through Steam or whatever kind of route you would like to go. So it's still open. You don't have to buy an Xbox. So it's a bit different than something like PlayStation's God of War. But they would still lock it down to the world of Xbox on consoles. That is a full possibility. They very well could do that. And in a traditional kind of sense, that's what Microsoft should do. Uh, because then you would have games that directly compete with something like a God of War uh, that is locked down to a console. You can't play it on PC. You can only play it on the PlayStation 4. Uh, and so Microsoft really has none of that right now. And again, in a traditional sense, that's probably the route they would like to go. But then there's this flip side, this alternative, where you can just keep things rolling. Now, Phil Spencer has said that games are going to be judged on a case-by-case -case basis, and then they will decide what consoles and platforms these games are coming to. So exclusives are going to be coming in the future. But you could have another scenario where big name games like The Elder Scrolls, like Fallout, like, again, games like uh, Wolfenstein, like Dishonored, like Prey. These could all be games that you see come to the PlayStation 5 because you don't necessarily want to, number one, lock gamers out, number two, leave that money on the table. Because again, every unit that they sell, regardless of whether it's on Xbox, PC, or PlayStation, is still money back in Microsoft's pocket at this point. Now that we've laid all of this out, which route do we think Microsoft is going to go? Again, if you want to build up the Xbox brand and you want to offer a true incentivization for somebody to go out and pick up an Xbox Series X or an S, then that would be the route to go. But the hardware for this generation is taking a back seat. The real next generation of Xbox is the Xbox Game Pass. That is going to be providing the most value, especially in a world where games are increasingly $69.99 a piece. And so I personally believe that Microsoft is going to continue the exact same approach that you see them taking on Twitter and on all of the other services they are providing by being very gamer-focused and gamer-centric and trying to provide the most value. 
I see Microsoft making decisions based off of an instant reaction, where you put yourselves in the mind of the player and you think, hmm, if I were to bundle in EA Play with Game Pass, would that be good for the gamer? Yes, automatically do it. If I were to, let's say, release all of the Bethesda games that are coming out on day one on Game Pass, would that be good for the gamer? Yes, do it. If we were to lock down games like Fallout, Elder Scrolls, and all the other ones that I've been listing off for the past five minutes, if we were to lock all of those down on Xbox hardware, would that be good for the gamer? No, that would not be good for the player. Uh, because at the end of the day, it's not about Xbox or PlayStation or PC or mobile devices. It's about getting people to play your game and just enjoy it. It's about giving people what they want. It's about entertaining. It's about having a good time. It's about connecting with friends through gaming. That's the route that I think Microsoft is taking. Now, to take a step back, this is a giant mega corporation. At the end of the day, they want you to get involved in giving them money. No matter what route they go, they want you to give them money. Sony's the same way. Nintendo's the same way. You can't keep you you don't keep lights on with the goodwill of the people. You keep the lights on with the good money of the people. Uh, and so, with, with that being taken into consideration, I do believe that Microsoft is still going to release games like The Elder Scrolls and Fallout on other pieces of hardware. The big question is, will they release Starfield on PlayStation 5? I apologize for hitting the mic, but will they release Starfield on PlayStation 5? That is something that I think is very, very interesting because no hardware has been announced for Starfield. There isn't an existing promise that the game is going to be coming to any console, let alone any other competing device outside of the Xbox ecosystem. They have the opportunity to make that an Xbox exclusive, and I think that's probably what you are going to be seeing. Uh, now, of course, if you do want to go back and check out the Kind of Funny X-Cast this week, I'm echoing the sentiments of what Gary Whitta said. He's written on Star Wars before. He's a very big name in the section of the gaming industry that I hang out in a good bit. Uh, but for Gary and myself, I also believe that existing franchises that have been multi-platform for the past few decades, uh, those will remain multi-platform franchises because that's what players expect. Now, for future projects, for anything that Bethesda makes in the next 10 to 15 to 20 years, that could be a bit of a different story. And I think that's why Phil is saying to judge each instance based on its own, uh, you know, unique uh, approach, judge each game based off of its own release, because everything could be different depending on what game you are dealing with. Now again, that's just my two cents. Ultimately, this is going to come down to giving players more opportunities to get their hands on Bethesda games, but it could also be an instance of locking down specific games out of the PlayStation ecosystem. And really, I have no solution and nobody else in the industry that is a commentator or a professional uh, influencer, whatever you want to call them, nobody really knows what is going to happen, but you can read into how the situation is going uh, and how Microsoft is approaching the next generation. They don't want to lock anyone out. They want to give you the option to get into their ecosystem at the most affordable price. They want you to get into the Xbox side of the situation, not necessarily away from PlayStation, but they also want you to come over to Xbox and enjoy some of those games, and that's really the name of the game. You know, when it comes down to it, Sony bought Insomniac because they needed an exclusive, and they needed Spider-Man, and Spider-Man, here it is, launching the PlayStation 5 in a very big way. Now, Microsoft has Bethesda. And that is, although nothing is happening at launch, launching the Xbox Series X and S in a pretty big way because you now know that some of the biggest games are going to be coming out on this hardware. And on top of that, you'll get them day and date with Game Pass, which is a fraction of the cost that you would normally be able to buy even one game at on the PlayStation 5. And that's the approach that Microsoft is taking this generation. They want to give people the most bang for their buck. And I'm a fan of that. Sony, not really doing that. Not really doing that at all, especially with the bungled mess that Spider-Man Miles Morales is where you buy the Ultimate Edition and you get the Spider-Man 4 or, or the Spider-Man PS4 remaster. But if you buy it on PS4, you don't get the free upgrade, but you can upgrade. It's gross. I don't like it. Not really a big fan of Sony's approach. Feels very corporate. Feels very money hungry. 
uh, which again, to be fair, super mega corporation kind of fits the bill. Uh, but I like what Microsoft is doing. It feels like they're trying to be a better company and that they're trying to give people a reason to get back into the world of Xbox. And they have to do that because, again, they are not the market leader. They are not doing well in comparison to PlayStation. They're doing good and they're making a lot of strides. And going into the next generation, they're poised to actually do a very impressive job of competing directly with their largest competitor. But let's not mince words about it. They have catching up to do. Uh, but that's just my thought. Uh, I would love to see what you think about all this down below. And again, if you do want to go back and check out some of my previous work uh, on the podcast talking about this, I would love to see you there. Uh, but again, we'll have to see where this goes. Should be interesting.